and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how to make a fun uh, repeat texture pattern using the native brushes in Procreate and um, the diamond method for a pattern, making a pattern. So um, I'm going to open a square document. I'm using a 10 by 10 inch document. We're going to create a new layer. And on that layer, we're gonna to go to the color black, which is all the way in this corner, as you remember. Um, and I'm gonna take this and drop the color into the layer. I'm gonna take the selection tool and go down to rotate 45 degrees and then fit to canvas. And then I'm gonna take that layer and I'm gonna press that little N and decrease the opacity down to about 20% or whatever, you know, whatever's, um, you want to be able to see it, but not have it not be in the way. Two of my favorite kinds of brushes are the drawing brushes in Procreate that come with it. You'll know these brushes because they have the little icons next to them. The uh, artistic brushes is where I am here. They have a whole host of different textures and all kinds of things that are going to give you the opportunity to make all kinds of marks. And uh, so I suggest going into any of these brushes that interest you and play with play with them. See what happens if you just press and hold, if you make a line, if you make a circle. What are the ways that you could create some repeat pattern using just marks? So that's your exploration to do. Um, and I would say start with the artistic brushes and down here with the drawing brushes. These are my favorite brushes. So today I'm gonna to use this Oberon brush here, and I'm gonna have it set to uh, 9%. So that's the brush I'm choosing. I'm gonna delete, decrease, uh, sorry, delete that layer. Create a new layer. And I'm going to do something, let me just see, I think for this one, I'm going to just do some very simple um, straight marks like that and repeat them in all different directions all over this diamond. The goal is to fill in the diamond, but don't go over these corner edges like that or like that. So we're just going to fill it in. We can kind of do something right over the edge here. We can just begin to go all around and I'll probably have to speed this up because you'll probably just get bored watching me do this, but, um, and make marks that are different, but, but the similar, if you know what I mean. So every time I do it, it's a little bit different. I'm changing the angle. I'm doing something slightly different, trying to keep the spacing the same so that there's not a whole lot of gaps and irregularity. And just going all the way around and filling it in within the diamond. If it goes off a little bit on the edge, it's fine because you're just gonna you're gonna fill that in anyway. So it's just important not to go off the edge of the um, the corners there and off the edge of the paper just the the canvas just yet. So. It's um, challenging for me to do this and talk, so I'm just going to be quiet and do this, and I'll speed it up. Okay, this isn't perfect, but you get the idea here. I'm erasing this one because it's dead center in the middle and it's really big. So that might stand out quite a bit in my design. So I'm gonna change that up a little bit. 
so it goes kind of like that. So um, the t the pro tips here are to remember uh, to remember the brush size that you used. Very important to when you click on a size. I'll show you. I'll click on another size brush here. Press on it and add the plus button to save it because you want to save the exact same size brush because once we go out to the sides we're going to go back and fill it in we wouldn't want to fill it in with another another size brush so we're gonna in order to get rid of that i'm going to get rid of the three percent because i am using this one i'm using the nine percent so put that back on the nine percent here Okay, so the next things are to really just to scrutinize it a little bit, squint. If you see any big gapping holes, you can fill it in. If there's anything you don't like, if anything's too big, I might fuss with this a little bit more, you know, but for the sake of this demonstration, the next piece of this is to um, duplicate that layer. We're going to save that original, shut it off so that if anything goes awry, you have that there to work with. We're going to take this copy of that layer. We can pick another color just for fun. And we're going to go into each of these corners in the lower left and fill it right in. A little diamond there, a little uh, triangle right there. Doesn't have to be perfect triangle, but you want to fill it in in each of these uh, corners, the two corners, lower left and upper right corner. We're going to shut off the... Um, template and uh, we're going to duplicate this layer that we just made four times one duplicate the original four times okay so as you can guess we're going to push each of these into their uh, pers uh, respective corners the thing that i have noticed is that i think the best opportunity for really good snapping is when everything's shut off and you're working one layer at a time. At least that's true with my iPad. I don't know how anybody else is doing this. We wanna make sure snapping uh, and magnetics is turned on, and it is. So we're gonna take that first one and pull it all the way up into the corner until it snaps and the golden yellow lines come on. Press the um, selection key, turn on the next layer. I'm gonna shut this one that I just did off and I'm going to do the same thing move this to the corner until it snaps into place there you go golden lines shut that one off go to the um, next layer move that one down and you see how quickly it snaps into place and then I'll shut that one off and move on to this one. Last layer, move it into the lower right-hand corner. Snapped into place. Turn them all back on. And if you zoom in, you'll see that, that those corners are meeting exactly. They've completely matched up. So I'm going to take these uh, four corners and pinch them all together so that they're on one layer going to go to my eraser and I'm going to make sure I get rid of all of that um, those marks that I made the orange or whatever color you use make sure it's completely gone because you don't want that in your pattern okay so the next thing is we're going to take we're going to go right onto this layer we're going to go back to our color black going to go back to our brushes back to our Oberon back to the exact same setting and guess what we're just going to fill this in and make it kind of a fun pattern that would be perfect for a little repeat. So you'll probably be bored watching me do this, so I'll likely be um, speeding this up. Okay.
Okay, so the key things here are to remember that this is really gonna probably be just used as a texture in the background. It can be kind of um, irregular, and uh, I think that could actually add to the interest of this. You wanna make sure that you've got, you know, you don't want a whole bunch of them lined up and create, creating a bunch of uh, lines, like see how this drags your eye. They're both going in the exact same direction. So I might go in and change that, make it go in another direction so it's not like so um, creating a line in the pattern. These two are the same way. I might change the direction of something here. Those are just little, I mean, those are little picky kind of things, but um, it might make it better if you if you pay attention to some of those things. And then the other thing you can do is kind of squint, move, make it go away, make it move smaller. Do you notice any big gaps and, um, when you squint? Um, okay, so now this is the part where we're going to make the brush. So we're gonna uh, three finger tap, three finger swipe down, copy all. We're gonna go all the way to our brush library. And we're gonna um, add a new set. I'm gonna create a new brush in that set. We're gonna go into, it opens up that default brush. So now we're just gonna go into shapes, sorry, grain, and we're gonna press edit, import, paste. And we're gonna switch this. This could also make a brush. It will be the reverse. It will be white uh, white elements on a dark background. So we want it the reverse. You could actually make it any way that you want. So that part's done. We're gonna go to, uh, in the grain, you wanna make sure offset jitter is off. It's off. And then you'll go to the Apple Pencil and we'll turn the opacity to none. We'll go to the properties and the preview size can be, you know, 15 to 30% and we'll make it the maximum size. I just want to go back over to grain and show you that as you press the scale, you can increase or decrease the scale of this. Um, um, design here. Okay, so that's done. And if we come out to a new layer, let's pick a fun color. Um, here, we'll pick blue. And we'll use this here. And it will make a fun background pattern, and you can change the scale of it. Um, I just want to show you um, a little time lapse of all the possible variations that you can have when you're doing this. So this is um, a time lapse of uh, some brushes that I've made. So um, one other thing, I just want to show you how to use them. If you have a, um, a piece of art, like just a simple shape like that, you can um, go onto whatever layer it is you want to put the texture on, add a new layer, and then we're going to do a clipping mask and 
We're going to use the brush and we'll fill it in with maybe this orange color here. And there you have it. You can then change the um, opacity. You can change the different uh, ways that different layer, multiply, linear burn, um, and change the opacity. And there you go. So I hope you have fun making these brushes. Be sure to let me know how you're going to use your, your pattern brush and any questions that you have or comments and any videos you'd like to see. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And as always, love it if you continue to follow and press subscribe. Thanks so much.